So we're going to learn about section 4.5, concentrations of solutions. In chemistry, we use a unit for concentration, and that unit is molarity. The symbol for molarity is M, and we read this when we see an M, capital M, we say molar. So the equation for molarity, so molarity is the unit, and it's read as molar. Molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution, and you might be wondering what all this vocabulary is. You'll see in just a moment. It's defined below. And in symbol language, in chemistry we always use symbols. Molarity, or the molar amount, is moles over volume, N over V. N is your mole solute. V is your liter's solution. So these two equations are exactly the same. It's just, this is in symbolic notation, this is in words. Okay, the solute is a substance dissolved in the solution. The solvent is a substance in which the solute is dissolved, typically a liquid. And for ke this class, for general chem, honors chemistry, uh, our solvent is almost always water. And lastly, the solution. What is a solution? It's a mixture of a solute and a solvent. So these terms all depend on one another. Let's do some problems. Okay, here's our question. So the first thing you want to do with a question is identify what information do you have and what does it mean. So we have 10 grams of sodium hydroxide. You should be able to identify that that is NaOH because we know how to go from a name to a chemical formula. And grams will give us moles. All right, we can always do grams to moles using molar mass. And now we're going to find out what's this 100 mils? What is that representing? It represents a volume. So we're given something that can get us moles. We're given volume. We look at our equation. Here's our equation right here. And it says, what is the molarity? So we are trying to find, oops, find molarity. OK, we have our equation. Molarity is moles over liters. M is N over V. We need to find N first, the moles. Remember, N is moles. So this piece right here gives us our moles. We look up at our information. Volume is not going to give us moles. But this, the grams, gives us moles. We use our molar mass. Can't forget how to do our conversions. We're back to conversions. Oh, dear. So we have 0.25 moles of NaOH. And then the volume, we're going to have to convert this 100 mils into liters because the definition was moles solute per liter solution. So we will convert milliliters to liters. You have to remember that conversion factor. A thousand mils is one liter. Now we'll just plug into our equation. So molarity is moles over liters. Plug in our moles, plug in our liters, and we get 2.5 molar NaOH, and that is our answer. Next question, what mass of magnesium chloride is in blah -dee -da? <laughs> Okay. Identify what's given. So what information do we have? We have that 250 mils, which is a volume. Oh, I first wrote down the molarity. You could do it in either order. So I have two numbers here. You have to identify what each number is. Um, don't, we will worry about sig figs when we get to the end of the problem. So um, this is the molarity, and that's MgCl2. You should be able to figure that out on your own. This right here, you should recognize milliliters. That gives us a volume. So we're going to have our equation. Molarity is moles over liters. Um, and we're trying to find the mass. So we'll have to get moles from our equation. Molarity is moles over liters. And then convert to grams. So here's our equation. We isolate the moles. That's what we're trying to find here. N is your moles. And just rearranging this equation, N is molarity times volume. And we just plug in our values. So we have molarity and we have volume. I'm going to rewrite molarity as moles per liter so that you can see how the units cancel out. Because the units for molarity are moles per liter, moles over liters. In fact, I often like to cross out capital M and rewrite it as moles over liters. So here we go. Let's put that back up a little bit. So we have to first convert our volume into liters. That's that step right there. 
and then plug into our equation. N is molarity times liters. And you'll notice here that I rewrote the molarity as moles per liter. And if it's 0.1 moles per liter, that means 0 0.10 moles per one liter right here, per one liter. So molar is the number of 0 0.10 moles per one liter. And I multiply that by the volume right here. We calculated the volume right here. And we get our moles. And we were asked for mass, which is grams. So we will have to convert these moles into grams. Whoops. And there you go. There's your answer. OK, next topic. OK, so now with concentrations of solutions, we also will talk about diluting solutions. Dilute means to, you know, you think of orange juice, concentrated orange juice. We dilute it down by adding a bunch of water to our concentrated orange juice. Well, in chemistry, we do the same thing. We get concentrated stock solutions. I, stock just means I go to my chemical stock room, and I get a solution that's in there, and I will dilute it down so that I can run an experiment. So I might keep five molar sodium hydroxide around, and then I dilute it down for different experiments we are going to run. And we have an equation for dilution. M1V1 is M2V2, or MIV-V is MIF-VIF, where the I's stand for initial conditions, and the F's stand for final conditions. So either way, you can use the M1V1, M2V2, or MIVI is MFVF. And you might hear students walking around saying MIV is MIFF. M initial, V initial is equal to M final, V final. M is molarity, V is volume. So here's a problem. So what's my information? We write down all of our information. We've got our 25 mils, our 0.1 molar, and our 100 mils. Have to figure out what's initial, what's final. From reading this, we are using our stock solution as always how, where you're starting, your initial conditions. And we're going to dilute it to our final conditions. So on the next problem, you might want to try it on your own. OK, now we have our equation. M1V1 is M2V2. We plug it in. Actually, here I like to isolate the unknown. You'll see in all my problems, I don't just plug the numbers in. You get the answer more correct more often if you isolate the unknown, which is the final molarity, and then plug in your numbers. So I'm isolating final molarity and then plugging in all my numbers to get 0.25 molar and AOH. OK, next problem. Next problem is involves hydrochloric acid, you should be able to figure out that formula. You should try to solve this on your own at first. You know, you can always pause and try to solve it now that you have your equation, but I'm doing it now. Here's your information. OK, so we've got all of our given values, and we have to figure out who's initial and who's final. Let's see. We're preparing this stuff from the stock solution. So we're preparing. That's where we're ending up. That's our final information. And right here is our stock solution. That's our initial conditions. So that's why the 0.5 molar is the initial conditions. And we are trying to find what's missing here. We're trying to, oops, we're trying to find our initial volume. So we're going to isolate the initial volume, plug all the information in. We get 50 milliliters. What does that mean? The question wasn't, what's the initial amount of stock solution we need? That is what we calculated. The question was, how are we going to prepare this stuff? How do we prepare it? Well, we now know we need 50 mils of the stock solution. And we're going to have to add enough water to get to a total volume of 250 mils, because that's our final volume. So we're starting with 50 mils of the stock and adding 200 mils of water. The difference between these is how much water you add. So 250 minus the 50 gives us 200 mils. So the actual answer to this question is this sentence right here. Add 200 milliliters of water to 50 milliliters of the stock. The stock is not 0.1 molar. The stock is 0.5 molar. The stock 0.5 molar HCl solution. And that's it.